Hey, and welcome back to Let's Get Your Shift Together. My name is Adriana, and I'm going to be talking about my most recent relapse. So for the past three weeks, I've been having some neck pain. And if you've seen on my Instagram, you've seen my x-ray of my neck, I am going to include it here. As you can see in this x-ray, my neck is kind of tilting to the right, and my head doesn't look like it's on straight. My report is a little scary. So I'll just go ahead and read what it says. Um, cervical spine, there is loss of normal lordosis with mild kyphosis of cervical spine. Appearance can be seen in muscle spasm. There are degenerative changes with narrowing discal spaces at the level C4-5, C5-6, and C6-7. Right neural foramina are patent. There is narrowing of left neural foramina at the level C3-4 and C4-5. Conclusion, degenerative changes. So basically, I got this x-ray done in 2017, and it scared the absolute crap out of me. So I figured, at the time, I was 28 years old, and I figured, wow, it's really downhill from here if I'm already having degenerative changes. This, I thought I was aging at an unprecedented rate, and it was just a ticking time bomb before I would be 100 years old in the body of a 30-year-old. that x-ray is a little scary my head's lopsided my neck slants to one side and there's some big words that they used in the report which i made the mistake of reading and that freaked me out and this x-ray is from 2017 and um that's probably the year where i mean 2018 things were at their worst but like that's where it like started really really getting bad um so 2015 is kind of where it all began and then over the years, it just got worse and worse and worse. So it started with my wisdom tooth extraction, then eventually all this other crap started happening. And so this is just going to be all about my neck because I'm not going to spend too much time getting into all the little other things that kept happening. I'm thinking I might do a video story on like each thing that I had that is tension myositis syndrome just because there's so many things and I'm pretty sure I had almost every single symptom imperative of TMS. So back to the point. I was having a relapse starting three weeks ago. So weeks one and two, they weren't so bad. I was kind of like just dealing with it. I was doing my usual, um, ignoring the pain. Um, I was talking to my pain, but kind of saying like, this is not necessary. I don't need this pain right now. I know that there is an emotional component as to why I'm feeling the pain and I'm going to do this my own way. Pain, I don't need you. So that's what I kept doing. That wasn't working. So that was week one and two. That's what I was kind of doing. The avoidance, the ignoring, the talking to the pain. Nothing was working. Week three was this past week. And that is when I guess shit got real. That's when I really was starting to question everything because nothing was working. So I started journaling. I journaled my ass off. I journaled every day. Some days I even did twice a day and I haven't done that in a while. Um, and I would get like some temporary relief from it. And usually it works. And again, I would recommend anyone to do the journaling in general. Um, I think just because I'm at the stage that I'm at with my healing, there's reasons why it didn't work for me because I think this is a whole lifestyle change and you need to kind of be in tune with your body all the time and going from like not having that sort of mindset to having that mindset I have 30 years of what bad wiring I mean I don't want to call it bad wiring but like you know the wiring that caused my TMS to begin with that's 30 years worth of that Realistically, I only have like six months under my belt of uh, healing, so it's kind of hard to not revert back to the old programming that I had for 30 years. So it's completely normal that this would have happened to me, and I'm sharing my experience on how I came out of it when nothing else in my TMS toolbox seemed to work. I finally started going back to the gym this week. Uh, partially because I can finally do it again, and partially because I wanted to prove to my neck that this is not going to harm me and I'm going to work through the pain and nothing bad's gonna happen. And um, then I figured the pain should go away because Dr. Sarno, one of his main points is that you can't stop physical activity. So I amped up my physical activity by going to the gym, lifting weights, doing a lot of arm exercises and like 
the arm exercise is connected to my shoulder basically and like my neck pain had been from here into my shoulder so i figured you know i'm going to work out these muscle groups and show myself that there is nothing harmful about this i'm going to be okay and that didn't work either <laughs> My overachiever and ambitious personality traits came in and they decided that I needed to do all the things and do it correctly and perfectly and you know the perfectionist stepped in for a bit too and um, that wasn't working and my goodest part came in because then my imposter syndrome came in and said like how can I be helping people when I am not good like I'm in pain and I can't help people anymore I need to quit this whole life coaching thing I need to like just you know <laughs> shut down my instagram page shut down my youtube because obviously i'm missing something here and uh that was couldn't be further from the truth because we're all works in progress so it doesn't matter how up there in your journey you are there's always room to learn there's always setbacks there's always relapses it's just part of the beast like this is just it's, that's life there's relapses with anything um, whether it's like you're using the TMS principles for your anxiety, you're gonna have a panic attack every now and again. It's not gonna be as often as it used to be once you have um, all your tools and figured it out and you've done the work, but it's gonna happen. So it's just the same as with the pain. It came back because of whatever reason. So I was trying to figure out what emotional reason it was that my pain was here. With my journaling, I felt every damn feeling. I felt happy, I felt sad, I felt guilty, I felt angry, I felt excited, I felt shame, I felt fear, everything. And that wasn't friggin' working either. So, what the hell was I gonna do at this point? I decided to kind of go back to my first step of ignoring the pain and just kind of powering through it and um, seeing how that goes. And still, that wasn't working. So, finally, I guess it was when I stopped thinking. This was my problem. I was thinking way too hard about all of this. I was in the shower where I do my best thinking apparently. I think because there's no pressure to think properly in the shower and then like things just come to you. Like I guess that happens to so many of us. Um, I finally showed my pain who's boss. My issue was I was having problems looking to the right. See, I can do it now. I feel a little twinge of pain. So this, I might be able to do this like live, <laughs> getting rid of the pain again. Um, so basically I stayed in this position for, I guess it was like 15 to 20 seconds. Right now, when I'm in this position, it's, I don't know, what was that? Like five or 10 seconds, not even? The pain's finally gone. So my brain's catching the concept. So basically I stayed in the very uncomfortable position. My neck was killing me. It was sharp shooting pain. It felt like something was off in there. I just kind of stayed there until it went away and it took like a solid 15, 20 seconds and it went away. So I was like, okay, cool. So then I looked straight again and then I looked to the right again and it hurt again. Not as bad, but not as good as when I came out of that position initially. So I just kept doing this for 10 reps or so. And as I was doing it, I was talking to my brain saying, there is nothing dangerous about looking to the right. There is nothing dangerous about doing this. There is nothing dangerous about doing this. And then I looked to the left too, just to kind of make my brain really understand. Like there is nothing dangerous about doing this. There's nothing dangerous about doing this. And there's nothing dangerous about doing that. There's nothing dangerous about doing this. And I just kind of rolled my head around and I had no pain at all. So that was great. And I realized I'm still in fight or flight mode, whether I'm conscious of it or not. Unconsciously, I was in fight or flight mode. I have 30 years of being in fight or flight mode out of necessity. Now I'm out of that necessity, but my brain hasn't caught on completely. It's caught on for the most part, but I need to continue reminding myself on a regular basis that we're okay. Basically, when you have a relapse or when you are in chronic pain in general, if you've just started out with your TMS journey and you're just figuring this out now, um, it's basically your nervous system is asking you like, are we okay? Like, are we okay though? Like, I'm just gonna give you some pain right now because I don't know if we're okay or not. And I just need a reminder that we're okay. So, and I knew this, I knew this fundamentally, I knew this from all the 
work that I've done in the past six months and all the research that I've done, and I've done this in the past, but I just kind of, it just kind of slipped my mind these past three weeks. I think the pain got so bad in those three weeks that I just, it's easy to forget. And TMS will test you on a regular basis. And that's what really sucks about it. But it's also to make sure that you kind of keep reminding yourself that you're okay. We're okay, there's no physical danger happening right now. That's what it took for me to figure it out. But I did all these other things before I did that one thing. And maybe that was the only thing that I needed to figure out at that time, but it just took me a while to figure it out. So now I have this other thing in my toolbox and I know that I can use it whenever I need to, if nothing else works. And next time that I have a relapse, I might just start with that. And basically I just showed my brain that I can look to the right and not have pain. And there is no reason for me to look to the right and have pain. Why would there be? There's nothing attacking me. There's nothing, there's nothing coming. There's no arrow on its way to my neck. So I run. Pain is just the fight or flight response. This is a quick video, but in my opinion, it's a very important video for anyone who's going through a relapse or just discovering TMS. Just talk to yourself in your head or out loud, whatever works and just tell yourself that you're okay. Another thing I wanted to also mention is there's two ways you can do it and it really depends on your style. Everybody's different and just do whatever way works for you. The way that resonated for me was being a little more of an aggressive approach. So basically I told my brain like, listen, this is safe. This is safe. This is safe. <laughs> Get it through yourself that this is safe. There is no freaking threat to my safety right now. So like stop this shit, stop hurting because there's no reason for this. This is like, you're just, you're in this fight or flight mode for no reason right now. You have felt all the feelings, you have done all the work. You're still in a state of fight or flight and you're still in pain and you're still worried about some sort of threat clearly because it worked and there's no reason for it. So suck it up and stop hurting. Stop giving me this pain signal. Stop telling me that there is danger because there is no goddamn danger. That's the one approach. You can be more aggressive if you want to. Um, I wouldn't go to the point of like completely putting yourself down and saying like, oh, you dumb bitch. Like, <laughs> you know, um, you wanna still be kind to yourself, but like firm. So use whatever vocabulary is going to resonate with yourself to get it through. Um, the second approach would be the kinder, more sympathetic approach. So it, de it really depends on your personality type. So this approach, I know it doesn't work for me, but it does work for some other people where you can just kind of like talk to your brain slash nervous system and say, hey, look, I get it. You're worried. It's okay. See, I'm not even good at like <laughs> imitating this kind of pep talk because I it just doesn't resonate with me. <laughs> uh, I think for me, just being more firm with my nervous system works better. So I'm just not even going to continue trying to uh, emulate this, but I think you get the point of what the second approach is. Uh, maybe one day I'll master that, but it's not really something I'm going to pressure myself to do. But if I do, I will make a video on that. I hope that this helps anyone who's going through a relapse right now. I hope this helps anyone who's just starting out on their TMS journey, because maybe if you initially start out with telling yourself that you're okay, it might actually fast track you on your journey on healing from chronic pain. So I think you should try it out. Leave a comment, let me know how it goes for you. And um, the trick is to really just keep reminding yourself that you're okay until you believe it. And how can you not believe it when there's no like tiger running towards you, right? So at some point of repetition, you're gonna have to believe that you're safe. There is no threat of danger. Nothing bad's gonna happen. You have to believe it at some point. It could take three repetitions. It could take one repetition. It could take just even watching this video one time to realize, oh yeah, I'm safe. And then, wow, holy crap, the pain's gone. It could take 10 repetitions. It could take days of repetition. The point is keep repeating it until you believe it. And then once you believe it, you'll see that the pain's gonna go away. And if it hurts to move a certain way, try staying in that position and you'll notice that the pain will go away. So this is kind of like my point on challenging your pain to get worse. If you go into the position that you know is going to be painful, stay in it. 
prove to yourself that there's nothing dangerous about this and it's just a response from your nervous system that you're not safe, but you are safe. So once you start doing the thing that you don't think is safe and realizing that you are safe, you're gonna start believing it and it's going to just kind of make the pain sort of dissolve and uh, yeah, try it out. Let me know how it goes and um, if you have any other insights, feel free to share that. Feel free to share it with uh, the world, really, because I think we just, everyone needs to know about TMS. Like, it's such a life-changing concept. Everything that Dr. Sarno has done in his lifetime, everything that all the other TMS experts are done, everything that I'm starting to do, this is so important and this is like life-changing on such a big level, but more people need to be made aware of it. Feel free to ask me any questions about TMS. If there's anything that you're like kind of struggling with and you're not clear on, I can make a video about that. So feel free to leave me as many suggestions as you like. I will do my best to address those kinds of questions and um, points of confusion because I totally understand that this can be such an isolating and weird journey to go on that um, this is exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing. This is why I am a TMS coach. Like this is, this is why, because I went through it. I know how it is. I know what value I can bring to you who is going through it yourself. Anything I can do to help you help yourself to get yourself out of chronic pain, I, any suggestions that you have, feel free to suggest. We're all on a learning path. We're all in this together. I just think the more people that figure this out and are able to heal themselves and even maybe become coaches themselves once they're healed, like me, this could really make such an impact on so many people. Enjoy the rest of your day and I really hope this helps.